What's up everybody, my name is Ben Green and in this video what I wanted to go through was how I got started as an Airtable consultant, how I got started as a software consultant or a business strategist, I don't know what exactly name you wanna put on it, but how I got started. I get this question all the time, nearly in every call that I take with somebody who's brand new to meeting me or they maybe watch the channel or maybe they're a referral. So this video will be a great place to start to learn a little bit about who I am and how I got started. So if you're interested, you can just keep watching the video, but if not, then it was a great meeting. Uh, so to kick us off, I'm gonna use a tool called Miro, and actually you might no notice something new on the channel, just got these blue light blockers. They seem to be working a lot better than the old ones that were getting fuzzy. Uh, so highly suggest getting some blue light blockers, but how I got started. So again, this is a question I get asked all the time, so I figured I would answer it on YouTube. So. The background for how I got started was in college. And in college, I went to IU Bloomington. You can see my degree right there, graduated in December. But in my first two years, I was taking classes in Excel and Access, and then another advanced class in Excel. And then later down the line, I was taking classes in Management Information Systems. So uh, I put these acronyms here so that I could sort of go through them. So what I learned, what an SDLC is, is that's a software development life cycle. Really fun stuff. Uh, most people will never learn it. Uh, and TOGAF is a framework for that. Uh, so within TOGAF, uh, I don't know exactly what that means anymore, but uh, within TOGAF, you might create something like an ERD, which is an entity relationship diagram. So an ERD might look like something like this, which if you're a client of mine, you probably recognize this. this looks very similar to the, the schemas that we create. So not always this in depth because that's not always needed, but that's what we go and create. So from there, from taking those foundational classes, I then went and did a lot of application of this. I wasn't the best in the classes, um, although I did learn nearly every single in and out of Excel and lots of ins and outs of access. My main focus in college was getting actual experience because I see that as a lot more valuable. Uh, it's also why I started started my own business doing consulting like this. And what I learned first were processes. So my first two jobs out of high school were I was a factory worker at Zimmer Biomet, and then I was a factory worker in a long at Gerdau. It's a long steel factory plant. It was a very dirty job. If you ask my girlfriend, she will really not give you fond memories of that summer, but. From working in the factories, I worked in factories. I did a lot of processes that were just very repetitive, uh, very labor intensive. It was like over 100 degrees in all the factories, so it was a lot of work. Um, but from that, I learned processes at the end of my month or at the end of the summer. I gave uh, like a sheet with like ways they could improve their process and processes uh, to like produce more in the factory. Ha take a lot less time to go find where certain stuff is, gave them a lot of ideas. And that was really where the wheels started turning in my head on like, maybe I could like do this for other people. Like if I can figure out what, what they're doing now, how it all works, maybe I can give them an, an improved system just by looking at it. Uh, so that's where I got processes down. Then I learned a lot about leadership. For one year, I was the president of my fraternity, Pi Kappa Alpha, uh, Phi Phi if you're a brother. Um, but after that, I was then involved in a nice team. It was I was then overseeing all the fraternities as the IFC vice president. So from that, I got to really understand some company dynamics from working in the factory, leading the fraternity, and being a part of a team on the IFC. So all of those. And then in January of 2020, I was introduced to Airtable. And Airtable, it fit well with all of these because a lot of people manage their team on there. A lot of people might just be the only one in the company using it. Maybe it's just a CEO or a lot of times it's just a solopreneur using it. And a lot of times people have like really robust processes, plugging into Airtable, plugging into some other systems. Um, and at its core with the formulas that Airtable has, exactly like Excel, and maybe not quite as many as Excel. And then the re relational database design, really similar to Access, it just, clicked. So January 2020, I started using Airtable, just managed all my school in it. Maybe someday I'll show you my school base that I first, my very first one. And then after that, 
I graduated in December. So between January 2020 and December, I started helping businesses in May of 2020. May of 2020, I did an internship and basically just implemented a ton of Airtable systems in one business. And then I think it was like in September or August, I started this YouTube channel and started really helping businesses at scale. So that's where it really started was just getting case studies, helping businesses out. Uh, I guess a few examples of case studies, I brought them down here. Um, if you want to pause the video, you can read these, but from Amber, Jesse, Sarah, Kelly, and then Drew. Uh, this one was actually just this weekend. This was an awesome case study set on the call. Um, pause those, check those out if you're curious, but that's, that's really how I started. So just from being in the weeds and m many different systems, processes, classes, that's really how I got the background and then applying it in all of these businesses and many more. I've now worked with over 40 businesses, but I thought I'd include five different case studies in here for this video if you want to pause it. Um, so now you have the background. Now a lot, the other question that I get a lot is what do I do? So what do I do for businesses? And this is really an overview of just four of the things that I most commonly do for businesses. So the most common one is a CRM. A CRM is like prospecting and sales, your whole sales pipeline. So within a sales pipeline, you do stuff like prospecting and follow-up, you do invoicing and financial reporting, you might do e-signature automation or automated proposals. So that's a lot of the stuff I set up with Airtable. We take your whole process, we do the entity relationship diagrams, the workflow, the whole workflow, uh, and do all of that in a custom CRM. Another highly requested package that I get is automated KPI systems. So these KPI systems can be on a weekly basis, monthly, quarterly, yearly, or even daily. I didn't mention that one. And it can do a number of things. So if you wanna uh, have an automated KPI system for marketing, for sales, for your like client success trackers, uh, you can do all of that with some of these automated KPI systems, which I talk about in other videos on the channel. I'm not gonna go into the specifics right now. The next thing that I do is client management system, also known as like a client success tracker or student success tracker. Um, so these are custom tools to track successes, manage the processes. It's like project management for all of your clients, basically. So that's what the client management system is. It's just what is everything you do for your clients? How can you organize and optimize it? And like really have a nice dashboard to see everything that you do for any one of your clients, specifically for service-based businesses. The next thing that I get asked for a ton are social media trackers. So half of it's automated posting. The other half is uh, managing your whole content production cycle. So managing all the assets that need to be posted when you're posting them and sort of the project management of that. So like what are the process, like how do we, what do we need to do today to get this post out two months from now? Or just like, what does that look like? How can we make like a, a library of ideas so that you never run out of ideas and yeah that's really th these are really like the main things i just wanted to give a few examples uh, these are really common ways that i help uh, businesses out so if you're curious about more then you can go down in the description of this video go to my website uh, you'll see many of these same case studies on there uh, if you pause the video and want to read them go for it uh, but I encourage you to go down to the website, check it out. You can check out some of the other stuff I do, but this is these are the main stuff that I do. A little bit of background about myself. So hopefully this answers your question if you've ever thought, how did Ben get started doing this? What is, like, why is he qualified to do any of this? Uh, this is just a little brief introduction since the probably the last four, four years of how I got started with Airtable and how I got started. So hope you enjoyed this video. And without further ado, I will see you in the next one. Uh, I'll probably toss in a video here at the end that gives you a little bit more of an introduction to how I started and just some of the About Me videos on the channel. So if you want to learn more about me, you can just keep watching this. So see you soon.